Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're well. Uh, I'm Richard Baker. I'm the founder and chief executive for Tokenovate. And Greg Ward, chief development officer of Smart Ledger Solutions. So uh, we're going to try and uh, keep this as light as possible. We're going to deep dive the topic of uh, benchmarks and indices or the development of indices associated with the energy footprint, the consumption footprint of blockchain technology. And of course, in modern society, the energy footprint is now synergistically linked to uh, sustainability and CO2 emissions. And so the context for me, I'm going to be the customer here. I'm building a financial services derivative trading platform, and we will be serving exchanges, broker firms, big enterprises. And they all have the question of what is the footprint yeah. of the blockchain that we're about to put trades and transactions through. And so, if I may, uh, today we are in a situation in the world where technologies keep evolving and we're commonly used to utility measurement of protocols, of networks, of infrastructure. And so we're going to try and unpack what is currently characterized as the Bitcoin blockchain energy footprint. And I, I would say perhaps in the world at the moment, the index that is most referenced in uh, journalism and publications is the Cambridge Center of Alternative Finance product. And they've been tracking consumption of the Bitcoin network for a good six, seven years, and more recently added Ethereum to their benchmark products. So the question for today, when you look at that reference data, is that it is largely characterizing the gigawatts or the terawatt hours of the Bitcoin network and gives an implied figure of the carbon footprint of that network. And so is the measure of a blockchain, from a utility point of view, fair to be just its energy footprint and its implied carbon? Is there another unit of measure? My good friend Greg here has taken a step towards uh, bringing about a methodology and a framework that allows us to think about this in a different way. So Greg. Can I hand to you on yes. the journey we're looking at? Absolutely. Uh, as you see on the, on the slides, uh, as we move through the evolution of technology, you know, you have something like the telegraph that came maybe from smoke signals, right? So in the, when you had smoke signals, you had to build a fire. It cost you a certain amount of energy. You're burning the wood. What did you get out at the other end of it? You move on to telegraph, and all of a sudden now you're bringing in electricity, and you're starting to uh, increase your energy consumption but what are you getting out the other side of it? Some more efficiency, more capabilities. You go to the internet, and now all of a sudden you're opening up a whole wide world of capabilities, e-commerce and, and, and transmission of emails, communication instantly. And it costs a lot more electricity than the telegraph, but we get a lot more out of it. So we always are measuring the input and the output. What are we putting into it energy-wise, the consumption, and then what are we getting on the other side out of it? When we go over to blockchain, which really is a incredible uh, opportunity for us in, in terms of, of, of the transfer of value, the transfer of data, integrity of data, we want to see that this blockchain gives us the output on the other side that is actually uh, gonna give us something that as society is going to say is worth the input. There's been so, many, so much arguments and so much discussion about the BTC network and the consumption that it, 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 it creates, the, the impact, the CO2 impact, but it's not taking into effect what's coming out the other side. And so what we have been looking at within the BSV network and, and, and also in just comparing blockchains themselves, legacy uh, technologies themselves, we're seeing how much energy goes in and what do we get on the other side. When we have, go ahead, Richard. Nope, well done. Um, so, so I think let's stick with this one for a second before we move into, but we're, we're going to introduce today a new uh, product, and that is the web3co2.net uh, reference location. And that will be a benchmark, and it's a destination to start to look behind the tin and get a little bit deeper on these footprints and the utility value of these networks. And I think. I'm going to ask you to unpack what's behind that service in a few minutes, Greg. But I think, again, just making sure we're, we're all setting a level playing field. Presently, we don't compare apples with oranges when we're looking at blockchain networks. Um, 
the measure of utility in other worlds has been well characterized. I started life at the beginning of this chart almost back in the 90s in telecoms networks and optical networks and transmission networks are often measured through the concept of their bandwidth, their throughput, the transmission rate. Voice networks of the old were measured in Erlangs, how, how much throughput can you get down a, a copper cable and how that evolved. More recently, I think in, in this conference we've talked about the utility of payment networks. What, how many transactions do I get on the Visa network or the MasterCard network? And we equate as consumers value to some of these units of measure. Certainly we do when we buy our mobile data and our unlimited minutes. We, we have the concept of utility value. And I think this is the journey really that we are trying to ensure that blockchain technology gets measured on. So if I may, we'll, we'll jump a little bit forward to trying to look firstly at the Bitcoin Core Network versus the Bitcoin Satoshi Vision Network. And these are just two sample sets. But what, what have we got here, uh, Greg, and how does this relate to the Web 3CO2 product and the dashboard that you're bringing about? Absolutely. So, I mean, if, if we think in terms of, of, of SHA-256 uh, hashing algorithm to secure the network um, for Bitcoin, and we look at Bitcoin, two different variations of Bitcoin, BTC and BSV, <clears throat> the energy that it takes to mine this block and what you get at the end of it, we have to compare the two. With BTC, uh, the fees fluctuate greatly depending on, on what's going on in the, in the network. As you see on this particular example, 68 cents average fees compared to BSV, an average fee of 0 0.008 cents. So when you have those comparisons alone, and we're still securing it with SHA-256, you have to say, well, if I want to send, let's say, a nickel from here to Africa, I want 4.999% of that five cents to reach. But if I'm using a network that requires so much uh, input, then that will never reach. You're, you're, you're missing 99% of your use cases when you don't get the output of scalability. Uh, you've seen throughout this entire conference uh, things like Serta hash with the, uh, yesterday's our presentation. We have high resolution that we could monitor networks and because we have 5, 000, one five thousand of a penny transaction fee, now we can monitor 10 second intervals throughout the day for multiple enterprises. May I say, say one more thing? Please do. If we, if, we look at our train, if we look at our train stations or our tube, we say there's a tremendous amount of value that we get out of it. People can move throughout the city and, and people can move throughout uh, England. But if it only could actually contain seven people, well, we would have a big argument about the efficiency and the, and the value that this, that this mass transit is giving us. Now, if you have an unbounded train fitting an unbounded amount of people, with an unbounded amount of, 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 of uses, uh, that they're taking this train to, you know, some are going to church, some are going to, to their work, some are going to meet up with family, many, many use cases. Then all of a sudden you start to see that the same energy that it took to send that train, all of a sudden that value and that efficiency tremendously goes down, or goes, the efficiency goes way up, and the individual carbon footprint per transaction, or if that case, per individual goes down. Go ahead, Richard. Yep, great, great analogy, actually. So this is where the world currently judges the Bitcoin network. So we have total hash power. Mm -hmm. That hash power, as it runs ultimately ASIC machines of different capacities, is consuming energy. And presently on the BTC network, the output value of that is the minting of coins. And in the BTC world, we know that transaction rates are very low. BTC processes about seven transactions a second. Mm -hmm. And of course, the story for BTC over the last few years has been it's a store of value. You know, and, and so people have been hodling and ultimately trading BTC. So the concept of utility on that network is currently linked to a store of value story. Obviously, BSV and I would say some of the proof of stake networks like Ethereum have been building towards real utility, smart contracts, Web3 builders, entrepreneurs looking to create new businesses, new, new applications. And so the, the theme we're looking at here is the real utility is use. And so when you think about that deeply in terms of a methodology, mm -hmm. how have Smart Ledger and the Bitcoin Association been thinking about developing a methodology that gets us closer to that utility value? Absolutely. So what we're looking at... Uh Smart Ledger, we are building the Web3 Energy Index uh, in collaboration with the Bitcoin Association. 
uh, we are taking not just the raw energy input, but we're also taking into account the block size and the transactional throughput of blockchains. Uh, we're measuring various blockchains and comparing them and contrasting them for businesses to be able to get an accurate metric to be able to, as Richard pointed out, to be able to show their stakeholders and their clients what is our Web3 footprint and how, what, what, how are we making our, our choices. We have an independent uh, display and dashboard for businesses to be able to look at this adjusted energy consumption rating, which again bases these technologies upon not just raw energy, but the actual block size and the transactional throughput. <clears throat> Yeah, and I can certainly say as an application builder on this network, this is really, really important. I need to be able to be in a position where banking customers, exchange customers of our platform, I need an independent reference. I need to be able to show them what this metadata, what this utility value looks like independently. Uh, every day, and I think throughout this conference, uh, I've been asked, uh, isn't this the most energy intensive network in the world? And the answer is no, BSV is not, BTC is. And we have to try and break down that network and explain uh, what you've captured now in a, in a really good computation, ultimately, is how do we really think about and measure utility. Um, so I guess as you've uh, laid out this methodology, Craig, and we think about now displaying Web3CO2 as a, as, a, as a utility product, what can application builders like Tokenovate and others uh, use Web3CO2 for? Sure. Uh, so businesses like Token Evate and, and other companies can go to Web3 CO2 uh, energy index and again they can measure the, or they could have a, a way of comparing legacy technologies, uh, payment methodologies, um, uh, data transmission methodologies, you know old legacy technologies, cloud uh, infrastructure. They can compare that, they can compare it against BTC, Ethereum, BSV, and we're going to have a comparison where you're going to be able to accurately ascertain what your carbon footprint would be for your company. Um, we're going to enable uh, you to be able to really independently show your stakeholders why you chose this particularly Web3 technology. It, it allows you to show your responsible commitment to our environmental uh, sustainability. And I, I had the fortunate role of running Tal, the largest blockchain mining company on the BSV network the last couple of years. And I can tell you, you know, as we moved infrastructure around the world and built a, a stronger presence in North America and Canada for our ASIC mining, I always found it interesting that the world doesn't necessarily understand how mining works. The concept of the blockchain nodes versus the ASIC mining rigs, the rigs sit in warehouses, data warehouses, and they are undertaking the computation for the hash power. Mm -hmm. And obviously in the BSV network, that computation is still a 10 minute cycle on the Bitcoin protocol, uh, but the relationship between the node and the hash power ha ASIC machines is very important. We don't, you don't send data to the hashing rigs. They are there to undertake the hash computation and that's all. So I think a lot of people ultimately misunderstand that when you're running the nodes, that actually these data centers are running the data and they house the data, but they don't. Blockchain networks are hybrid in nature. You're, you're still using cloud computing architectures. You're running in compute and storage environments where you use the underlying capability of a storage data base to house the payload data. But the compute resources for the node within cloud infrastructure are used for processing transactions. The nodes run within compute. So it's really important we understand as the nodes get increasingly efficient and as the block size becomes unbounded you know, and highly parallelized, when we hear at this conference Craig's talks and we hear about the Terra node program for BSV, we can see a future where there is unlimited capacity in that highly parallelized node architecture. And this is where the efficiency for this blockchain really delivers. And I would, as that introduction, I would say that's important when we think about Bitcoin protocol is a, is a payments it's a peer-to-peer -peer payments network. So the utility value of this is multifaceted, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you're, I mean, if you're, if you're looking at it as just a, a, a way to have a store of value, and therefore you're having both uh, those who are competing to buy up this so-called store of value, and then you have those who are competing to, uh, for that, uh, to, to win the blocks, if you will, simply for the, the subsidy. You're gonna have hash rate going up in a competition that is inefficient. But if you have something like BSV where you have an unbounded block size, 
Well, for one, as the subsidy decreases, we need transaction fees to be able to sustain the network. And so you need this unbounded block size to allow for the growing of the network. What's extremely exciting for me as I, uh, as I examine this and our team examines this is, we see that BSV, as an example with an unbounded block size, is, is the first time in history that we're able to, as the network increases, your individual transactional carbon footprint goes down because the hash rate, the competition to solve these equations, it remains the same, but as the block size increases, that CO2 footprint for, for mining that block gets divided amongst millions and millions and just continues to grow transactions. And now we're able to see truly the scalability and how that affects the sustainability of blockchain. Really, really well made point. I think, I think that is at the heart really of why this is such an exciting part of Web3 architectures. That this is a really critical component of how value is exchanged in the internet. So I guess roadmap wise for Web3 CO2. So uh, it's in collaboration with the Bitcoin Association. Smart Ledger has taken a really proactive lead role. And uh, for those of you who have met Brian Doherty as well, you see him in, in his policy role. This is linked to the fact that uh, you know, policy is being set around the world for the future of central bank digital currencies, for the future of stable coins, and, and really bringing clarity on these networks and these footprints is so important to that bigger picture. So of, over the, the balance of this year with, with the collaboration with BA, what, what can builders like Tokenovate expect in terms of getting access to Web3 CO2 as a product? Absolutely. So uh, the, the roadmap is going to be a progressively uh, evolving land, uh, roadmap. We're going to be first uh, allowing a uh, dashboard or enabling a dashboard for users and businesses to go on and compare legacy as well as other blockchains. Uh, we're going to be enabling more granular insights into your transactional throughput uh, as we go down our roadmap of, let's say, you know, three to six months. So we're very excited to uh, really open this up to the businesses where they have an independent way that they can ascertain their uh, carbon footprint. Excellent. And again, I, I would say Tokenovate recently announced for this conference that we had traded the first uh, voluntary carbon credits as derivative products. And we are seeing obviously increased focus through the lens of corporate obligations to report ESG. Um, that actually as CTOs and CIOs in corporations begin to make the choice to move to blockchain infrastructure, this is a critical component of the corporate responsibility for ESG reporting. So I, I really praise you, Greg, and the Smart Ledger team and BA for tackling this problem. I think the, the existing benchmarks and indices really mislead industry and in the fact that they just talk about energy footprint. But I, I look forward to seeing where we get to with this over the next six months and certainly by this time next year when this conference is running again, I think we'll have greater transparency really on the utility value of this network. Absolutely. So uh, thank you very much. We will hand some few minutes back to the, uh, to the rest of the team to catch back up on the day. But thank you, everybody, for listening to how we're evolving measurement of energy and utility in the blockchain infrastructure. ESV is more than another chaotic commodity craze. BSV blockchain can do more than just be a crypto investment. It can help you get more out of your games, share more of your art. BSV makes more things possible. <laughs>